turn my mic up. Boy, yo. Take there. Yeah, yeah, uh, on the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. business, business. Hustle fam, hustle fam, we are back with another amazing episode. It's your man, Ramel, and I am here with my brother, Hyro Cruz from yes, yes. JNG Cruise Trucking. Yo, listen, y'all, we're going to talk about the dump game today, dump trucks. This brother has like, I don't know, like 20, 30, I don't know how many trucks he got. Every time I see him, he has another couple added to the fleet. But we're going to get into it, get into his story. He really has a really amazing story about how he got started with dump trucks. Yeah. And um, we're just going to unpack that, man. So first of all, man, welcome to the show. Hi, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate for sure, bro. You, for sure. Yeah. Long time coming, man. I'm yeah, glad to have you. long time coming, I'm man. I'm glad to have you. So listen, man, let, let's get, get right into it, bro. Okay. Um, How'd you get into the dump game? First, let's talk about like your backstory a little bit. Okay. You know, where'd you come up? Where you from? Let, let's get into it. So I'm from New Jersey, Union City, Union okay. City, New Jersey. I started uh, my dump truck game like around five years ago in 2016. Um, I went to, I played ball in high school, in Emerson High School. I played, then I went to Rampo College of New Jersey, played basketball there. Then I graduated from there, then went to, got a job as a sales rep for Pepsi. Delivering potato chips and stuff like that. Okay. After that, I got a district management district management job for Bimbo's Bakery. Then, uh, two years later, I bought my first truck, and I'll tell you how I did that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so guys, so you started in sales. I started in sales. All right. Cool. So you said when when, when did you start in sales again? What year was I it? I started in sales about 2013. 2013, and you said you worked for multiple companies. No, we start. Uh, yeah, multiple companies. I started with Pepsi first. Okay. In their and they own Frito Lay, the okay. potato chip company. Yeah. So I started working with them. Then two years later, I moved up to Bimbo's Bakery. Bimbo's Bakery. A lot of people don't know this, but Bimbo's Bakery is a, is a Mexican company that they came to the U.S. and bought all like all the bread companies: Sara Lee, Entenmann's, Thomas Bagels, Fryhofer, Strowman's. So I started working with them. I got a I got a better job as a district manager. So I got I started working with them in twenty. 14 okay for the next two years and then that's when i got into the dump after that i got into the dump truck game yeah, the dump truck all right so when you're when you're selling what exactly are you selling like how, how does that how that sales job work so you're selling what the 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 products to the stores yeah we were selling the products to the stores getting shelf spaces on the stores but like but basically that product sold themselves like for me i was managing 19 guys that would deliver the product to to these stores like walmart shop rides all the big chains, and from there, like I'll be, I have like 19 guys, 19 route relievers, yeah, and they'll they'll do the job, and I'll just focus on doing a business with the, with the store management. Got you, got you. So there was a, a some trans- transportation involved. Yeah, transportation. So you involved. were kind of like you kind of like the sales manager, but like a dispatcher kind yeah, of. Yeah, I was a dispatcher. I was I knew what the routes. I knew how to manage the people. Like, one the number one thing I say about the dump truck game is managing if you know how to work with people and manage the people you, you're gonna be successful got you got you all right so talk about it. how do we make this transition from sales at bimbo and all these other companies into getting in the dump trucks talk about so that. i always wanted to become my own boss right so while i was in bimbo as a district manager i had to figure it out like i used to say man i don't want to i don't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life so i had to figure something out so i knew somebody that had a dump truck right and he he was like my my best friend's older brother. He had a dump truck, so okay. I, he I talked to him about it. I didn't know what type of trucks I wanted, but I wanted to get into the the, 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 the trucking world. Right. And he had a dump truck. I wanted to do a tractor trailer, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. That my main goal was like I gotta figure something out to be my own boss. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Right? What, what are you making at your sales job now at this time? I was making like seventy k. Okay. I was. It was not, not bad. bad. Yeah. Not bad. I was just out of college two years. Two years ago, so yeah. two years before that, so it was it was not bad, right? You know? But you wanted to be an entrepreneur. I want to be an entrepreneur. Why? Just because I I didn't really like people telling me what to do. Gotcha. So I had to figure it out, and the the best way to do that was doing my own thing. No doubt. Were there yeah. any other entrepreneurs in your family? Um, not really. Not no, really. Not really. No. Okay. Not really. So okay. my dad had his own business, but we never had a good relationship, so I can't even talk about that gotcha you know gotcha but not really I, I grew up with my mom we, it was it was just me it was just me and then back to how I became 
to the trucking world. Yeah, right? yeah. So I, I, my, I went to my boy's brother. Yeah. I asked him a couple questions like, yo, how do I, I want to get a dump truck. Like, talk to me about your business. So he, to, he told me the ins and outs. And he basically told me, hey, go talk to the guy Doug at Kenworth. Okay. So he, he introduced me to the guy Doug. I went, so I went back home and I told my wife, like, man, I want to I wanna get a dump truck. And she thought I was crazy. <laughs> right. She right. was like, man, what? A dump truck? I was like, yeah, I want to get a dump truck, Did man. she even know what a dump truck was? Yeah, she, she knew what a dump truck was. <laughs> now, now, hold on. Now, did, you, did the guy, did he have one dump truck or did he have... One no, truck? no, he had one Just dump, one dump truck. Okay. He had, he had one dump truck. Got you. And But his own company, though. Yeah, his own company. He was, okay. he was an owner-operator. Got you. Okay, right? cool. So he had his own company. So he, so he, he introduced me to Kenworth, right? But at the end of the day, we went through Kenworth. I, I I told my wife I want a dump truck. She told me one thing: I'll give you half of the money if you t- tell if you secure me that you're gonna put in the work. I was like, Yo, don't worry about it. Right, right, right. right. I got you. I'm gonna put in the work. I'm gonna make this work. Right. right. At the end of the day, me and the, me and the guy, he didn't have my best interest, so I kept it moving. Right. Okay. So it's fine. It's business. We understand that. So I ordered my dump truck. So now I'm like, Damn, I have n- I have. <laughs> <laughs> now I got a dump truck and I don't have no work. I have nobody I know in the business. Like, so I what I started to do, I started following random dump trucks. Okay, like following them in, in your in, car. In my car, because I was a district manager, so in the northern New Jersey. Yeah. So I would just pick a random dump truck and I was like, man, I'm going with that guy. Yeah. yeah. So I'll follow him to the job. I'll follow him to the job, and I'll ask him like, hey, what's up, man? I've been following you for an hour, but I ordered my first truck. It's getting here in three months. Do, where do I get work from? Right. And he'll tell me, hey, go talk to the project manager. Go talk to that person right there. So I'll talk to them. I'll introduce, the, I'll introduce myself. Hey, my name is Hyro. I, I just bought a, a dump truck. I ordered it. it come, it'll, it'll be here in three months. Would you help me out once I get it? Yeah. So I was just, yeah, yeah, call me once you get it. It'll give me their card. I, I write it down on my phone. So by the time the three months came up, I would do that every single day. I will just follow random dump trucks. Okay. Just to build my network. So by the time my first truck got here, I had work for it. Got you. Now that's that that's really interesting. But the thing that's 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 interesting to me is like you ordered a truck without even having any work. Like did you did you what made you believe that you'd be able to get work for this dump truck? I just I yo, I have faith in myself. I had I, I knew that my work ethic. So mm. with my work ethic, I was like, yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make this happen. What, and I couldn't let wifey down. She let me half sure. of the money. You what, know? what what attracted you to the dump truck specifically? Construction, infrastructure in New Jersey was is never gonna end. Mm. It's, it's, there's there's a building coming up here every single day in New York City as well. Got you. So, so you saw the opportunity. I saw the opportunity. You didn't know exactly how to make the money, where to go to get it, but you knew that around you, you know there was a lot of work being done, you saw a dump truck. Yeah, here. and I saw a lot of them. Right. Remember, I was always in the road with, as a district manager, I had all northern New Jersey, so you see these trucks everywhere. Right, right. You How know? much did you pay for your first dump truck when you got it? We paid down payment. We put 20000 down. Okay. It was a brand new truck. They went, it went for 200000 Wow. So yeah. you went big. I went right big. Right at the gate. Right at the, big, right at the gate, I went big. I was like, I'm going to make this work. Got you. Got you. How, how, how did you get the money to pay for the dump truck? Um, did you have savings? Or? Yeah, I had my savings and okay. my wife let me. So oh, you, oh, you did say your wife let you half of it, right? Yeah, right, right. so the deposit was 20000 then okay. we financed the rest. Okay. We had good credit. Thank God we had good Thank credit. Thank God and all for that. that. Yeah. So you basically purchased a house in this dump truck. This yeah, is like having yeah. another home. Yes. $200,000 uh, uh, investment, and you don't have any work, so you start following other dump trucks yeah. around. I started following random dump trucks, random people. Sometimes it would take me two hours following them for two hours. Like, yeah. I would just pick one of the, like, hey, I'm leaving with this one today. <laughs> and, yo, that's, that's, I um, swear to God, that's how it that's happened. That's how you got started. That's how I got started. So tell now. me about your first break. The first, because you, you, you were telling people, okay, I got a dump truck coming. Okay. Right? So when that dump truck comes, what do you do? Once the dump truck came, I went, I went through my list. I started calling people. All, everybody I met within those three months that I was following, I started calling them. Hey, I got my dump truck. Yeah. And so there's one lady, she used to work at Liberty Stone. And she was like, hi, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Set, here, send me the work. Send me the truck tomorrow. Okay. And from there, she, she just kept my truck rolling every single day. Okay. Okay. Now, who's driving this truck? I had a friend of mine. I had a friend of mine drive my first truck. And this guy, he was already in the dump truck world, right? Okay. He used to drive before. Okay. So when I, when I came up to him, I was like, yo, I'm trying to buy a dump truck. He would, like, a lot of people would try to discourage me, like, yo, you're crazy. A dump truck? You don't know shit about the dump truck. (laughs) 
But he was like, he always kept it 100. He was like, yo, get it, man. You're going to make it work, and I'm going to help you. Once you get the truck, I'll drive it for you. He had the experience. Okay. okay. Right? So I trusted him. I was like, all right. And he drove my truck. He drove my truck. <laughs> right. He drove my truck, and I two months later, I just kept doing that, networking. But remember, I, I, I did it for three months, so I had a lot of people calling me now. Like, once they saw that I had my dub truck on the road, yeah. a lot of people would call me. Like, hi, Ruth, I heard you got your truck. We need, oh, we right. need, we need work. We need trucks. Right. So guess what I did? What'd you do? Two months later, I bought my second one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I bought my second one. My wife thought I was crazy again. <laughs> another brand new one? Brand new one. Ooh. Okay. I bought another brand new dump truck, 2017. Gotcha. 2017 dump truck. So I bought it and they, they asked me for 10 grand now. Okay. They asked me 10, the dealership asked me for 10 grand. We gave them the 10 grand down. Right? And I put another driver. Right? But it's nothing's easy, but I we made it work because what I say to myself, my work ethic is on another level. Like yeah. no if somebody tells me no, that's motivates me to get it done. Yeah. Where'd you get the next driver from? Just Craigslist. We oh. put a Craigslist ad okay. and we just got a uh we got another driver. Got you. How how how'd you how'd you know how to it's even set your business up. I mean, outside from just getting the dump truck, there's other parts that comes gotcha. into setting up a dump truck. How, how'd you learn that? Nah, I'm going to give my props to my wife. Okay. My wife is a real educated, smart individual. Okay. Right now, she, she works in J.P. Morgan. Okay. She's a VP at J.P. Morgan. She worked, she's been there for 12 years. But she's the type of person that she teaches her, herself how to do things. So how to register the truck, how to um, get a DOT number. How to get our deal, our corp code. She would like read about it and teach herself how to do it. And that's how we got it. all those like the DOT, the corp code. That's how we got all that done. Gotcha. But she, she just read it, read like online, Googled it and taught herself. And that's how we got set up. Got you. Er- early on getting started with those first, you know, the first truck and then that second truck. What were your biggest struggles getting into the biz? What, what, what was like the most challenging thing for you? The most challenging thing is getting a driver. Getting a, a good a good driver, you know what I'm saying? Because I tell everybody that's trying to get into the business now, it's not even about the truck. It's not even about the work. A driver can make or break your business, mm-hmm. right? So the first thing you got to do is make sure you have the right proper team. You have the right the right team behind you. Right. Because a lot of people buy these trucks and just think one day to another, they're going to make millions of dollars. Right. Or it's a profitable. My first year was unprofitable. You know, I, I went through drivers. I, I had people calling out. And I didn't have a CDL to drive my truck. Mm. Reason why I didn't have a CDL to drive my truck? Because I knew where I wanted to go. Where I wanted to go was create a company so and create something big. So I knew that me having a CDL, when those drivers called out, I would hop on the truck right. and drive it myself. Right. So I said to myself, no, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to take the losses. As they come, mm. you know, I'm going to, once those losses, once those losses come, I'm going to prevail. Got you. And, and how much times did those kind of situations happen where you were like, damn, if I had a CDL, maybe I could have, you know, fixed this problem or did you run, did you come across that a lot? Yeah, it came across that a lot. Yeah. But I knew, like I said, it, it was, a, I, I, I saw the bigger picture, mm. but like, I didn't stay, I, I didn't stay on my feet. Like I didn't just, oh, I don't, my truck was down and I'll leave it down. I'm hustling. I'm trying to call people, put it on Craigslist, word of mouth, hand out cards, and like I'll, I will go to the plants, right? The right. plants is where we pick up the material. So I'll stay in the front of those plants. I'll drive there and I'll hand like there's dump truck drivers coming in and out. So I'll hand them my business cards, like hey, if you know somebody that has has a dump truck or that wants to get a drive that needs a truck or that needs a, to needs to drive a truck. Let me know I'm hiring. I have a truck now. Right. So I'll, I'll get drivers that way too. Right. Was, was the work consistent? Was there like a, 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 a lot of work or were there, was there times where work was stopping and you just, or you, you had to work but you just didn't have the drivers? Or how was it going for you in the initial stages of your business? Like in the, in the initial stage, like I had, the, the, the work was consistent because remember I got in in August. That's where busy season. Okay. We're, we're still in busy season. So okay. the work was consistent. But I didn't really have downtime with truck drivers because... Once I knew that this guy was not going to work out, I'll, I'll be two steps ahead of him. I'll be, 
I knew that he was not gonna like be a long term. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? Like you have. What, that, what, what were some of the things that would let you know that? Like what were some of the indicators that let you know that this guy may not work out for a while? Oh, I don't want to do this low. That that low is too far. So right away you're like, oh, this guy's not it. This 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 is not the guy that is gonna lead my company to be more successful. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, you leave him there until because you need him. At the end of the day, you need that guy. Right. Because you can't stop your truck. So you, I had to understand that. Like I can't stop my truck for. Just because this guy was, he didn't want to do the work. So I'll leave him there until I get uh, until I, I get a replacement. Got you. All right. So we 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 kind of left off. You had two trucks. Talk about how the company grows from there. Company grows from there. I uh, said in two months I got two. I, I got my second. Got truck. second truck. Three months later I got another one. Okay. So now the bank is it's called rapid expansion. The bank is like, oh now you want to get another truck? You got to put your money where your mouth is. Mm. Right. You growing too fast. We don't believe you, right? So I said to my wife, my wife's still thinking I'm crazy. They, the bank asked me for thirty two hundred, thirty two thousand five hundred, and I said, all our life savings, whatever the, these trucks made us in these three months, five months, we're gonna put it in, and we're gonna get the third one. Mm. Wow. So when I went there with the, when I told that guy Doug, he's the sales rep for Kenworth. Right. Same was, guy. Same guy. Yeah. He's, I told him, all right, I'm going to give you the 32500 So I got my third truck, right? And then from there, it's like, I've proved to the bank already. Like, I've proved to them, like, yo, this guy is really about it. Yeah, He's yeah. really, you're, you're, like, you build a core with these banks. Right. Right? So after that, it's like, I was ordering trucks left and right, like nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I already proved to them in my, my, first, in my first year. I had like four trucks. What 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 the banks want to see? I mean, the, outside of the cash, did they want to see contracts? Did they want to see anything else that would prove that you know you were worthy of this this money? Like, how'd that work? They wanted to see your that the trucks are being paid mm -hmm. on time, not a not a day late, not a like on time. Right. They want to see your bank statements that you're making money, and they want to see some type of like contracts that that you have. Like, what jobs are your like? doing at the, with, with these trucks right 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 now you said rapid expansion can you explain that one more time because that may have went over, over some people's heads you said you were growing too fast can you just so rapid expansion means like these banks they will like for somebody like me that never had trucking experience they're how are you gonna just they're, they're lending you two hundred thousand, right okay they'll take that risk but once you keep growing growing like in, in two months another 200 and in, in, in in another two months, another two hundred, the banks get scared, right? Right, because in reality, the banks can't don't really have much to do with these dump trucks, right? Not everybody's here buying dump trucks, you know what I'm saying? So, what they do, rapid expansion, they try to get you to a limit. So even if they lose, they don't lose six hundred thousand, they lose two hundred, right? But the more money that you you put down on these trucks, the less that the banks, that's the less risk that they have. Gotcha. So that's what that's what that's what they called rapid expansion. So the faster you grow, you're gonna have to just put more down in order to cover that liability that yeah, yes. you, you take on. Yeah, because what are banks gonna do with these dumps? <laughs> they gotta resell them. Right. But at the end of the day, the, 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 to find somebody that's willing to buy a, tr a truck for two hundred thousand, yeah, it's, it's not a lot of people. Right, right, right. Do do the trucks depreciate? Yeah, you could depreciate them. That's all within your taxes. Once you buy, you, you depreciate your trucks because they, they don't they're not worth this they're not worth the same. Because yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like just like for the resale, like if once you take it off the lot, like how much does that truck depreciate? Dump trucks don't really depreciate. Okay, in value they gotcha. don't because like for example, I had just my first dump truck. I resold it, right? Because I have new equipment, but I have drivers, so I got to keep getting new 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 equipment because these drivers. They take a toll on these trucks. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. for me as a company, I got to keep ma selling them back to the Kenworth. So the first one I bought it for like 200000 and the the Kenworth bought it back for me three years later for 130000 oh, Okay. So you, so done made, you done made that money, you know. Yeah, I made, I made that money, yeah. and I still got a good... 130000 back. Yeah. So what, nah, I that's did, dope. With the, what I did with that equity, I was just, I, I put it down for another one. Got you, got you. All right, so you said after that, you just started, they started basically just giving you dump trucks after that, right? Yeah, after that, it's like, <laughs> like I proved to you them. You had a track I, record. Yeah, I had a track record. I proved to them. And so, you know, my, my word was valid. My, my payments were always on time. I, 
I pray to you guy right now. Like I have five years in business. I've never had one late payment. Nice. And I own 10 trucks right now worth nice. 200,000. Wow. How, how, how did you know when it was time to scale and, and buy another truck? Like what was the indicator for you in terms of your business when it's like, you know what? I'm going to get another one. Just, I'm going to get another just, one. Just the work. Because I, I've ne I never stopped doing what I did from the beginning. I always was going knocking on these doors. Even till now, five years later, I still go to construction sites. I still try to get a new, new business. It's like real estate. I, I door knock on construction sites. Mm. Like these, these real estate agents door knock on, on houses, I door knock on construction sites. If I see a construction site today and it's there a week later, I'm going. Got you. Got I'm you. going because I, I, need, I, I need to know what's going on. If I could get the get the work who do i talk to i already you know from experience i know what to say yeah how to approach the business yeah so even to this day that's how i i i, I do business i don't how, how how receptive are they to you and what and what do you say i mean you're you know trying to get into this business like what do you what do you tell them you, you, they've never heard of your company before like what do you what do you well, say to them well now they heard of, yeah right now like it's easier because right. now they know the company now they know you have a reputation yeah, i have a reputation but in reality, when I first started in year one, they didn't really know. Right. They took a risk. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was, they, t they took their risk, but I, I, was, I was there to prove myself. Gotcha. I didn't, le I didn't let them down. Gotcha. Like one of the biggest contracts, I, like the biggest people I do business with was me just going to their job site. Okay. It was in Jersey City. They were there. It was, it was PCNG and Creamer Environmental. And I just randomly went there and the vice president was there that day. Wow. So I walked in the office like, hey, man, my, my name is Jairo Cruz. I'm, I just bought my first dump truck. I want to know if you, if you guys can help me out with some work. He was, and the guy was like, his name was Ryan. He was like, yo, it's your lucky day. The vice president's here. Let's see if he gives you five minutes of your time. Right, right, right. Of his time. Right. So he came out. Um, Tom, his name is Tom. Tom came out. He was like, hey, what's up, buddy? I was like, man, I got my, I got my, my first dump truck and I need some work. I need some work. He was like. Write me a proposal. I was like, man, a proposal. <laughs> so I, right. he was like, so he told, I told him, I, right, I write you a proposal, and I, and I asked him, yo, what do you? He asked me, what do you, what do you, what are you charging? So I told him, yo, I, just pay me anything, <laughs> for real. I said, I said to him, pay me anything. I just want in. Yeah. He said, he looked at me in my eye. He said, man, I don't need your money. <laughs> I don't need your money. I was so I was like, all right. I'm going to write you a proposal. But I asked him before I left, I asked him, what are you paying? Yeah. He said, oh, I'm paying X amount of money. So I was like, all right. Left the, left the, left the job site, call wifey. Right. You got to write this proposal. <laughs> you got to write this proposal. This is what they're paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't go a dollar less to a dollar more. <laughs> Match the price. Right, 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 right. right. So he, she did that, right? She sent me the proposal. I send it in, all right? So a day later, I called Tom. He was like, Tom, I say, man, I, I wrote you a proposal. You saw it? He's like, hi, bro, I like you, man. I like your persistence. I'm going to have one of, my, one of my people in my office send you a contract over. Wow, right? wow. Sends me the contract. I'm not even checking emails. I'm over here in the street hustling. Wifey's checking emails. She calls me. Yo, um, we got a contract. I'm thinking like five grand, ten grand. Keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy sent me a contract for like $112,000. Wow. Wow. So that was like my big break. Yeah. That was my, my big break. And from there, like, I kept working with these people until now. But I never, everything that they expected from me, I've done. Yeah. Yeah. You know? What, what, what made you be, because it's interesting as you tell that story, what made you be so transparent and so real with this guy? Because a lot of times people get into business and they're like, yeah, you know, we've been in business for such and such long. We got, we got, you know, they don't want to tell yeah, yeah. the truth. They don't want to be like, I just bought my own first dump truck. Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, you were very honest. Yeah, I was, I was straightforward, <laughs> man, because I was like, he was going to ask me questions that I didn't really, I didn't really have an answer for him, you know? And I was, I was new to the business. So, I just kept it real with him, like, yeah. you know, and I think that's when you're doing business and when I, I, one thing that I did learn throughout doing business is keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Like, why lie? Right. You know, now we, we come from where we come from, we do what we do, and I told him the truth and, and it worked out. Yeah. Now this guy, now I'm, I'm, I'm doing like seven, eight contracts with this guy five years later, you know what wow. I'm saying? And he tells me to this day, like, yo, I, I still remember when you came into my office and, and I, and I. Thank God he's seen my growth. You know, now we now we operate 20 or 30 trucks. 
and he he sees the growth. But if wow. I if I didn't keep it one hundred with him, and I would have lied to him, and he would have found out the lies. Yeah, my opportunity probably wouldn't been there. No doubt, no doubt. You just now said you do about seven, eight contracts with this one guy, so that kind of made me think. Like, is there such thing as putting too much of your eggs in one basket in in dump trucks? It is. So that's why I never did that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yes, he's one of my main guys, right? Th- this company's one of my main guys. So I o- I'm always loyal to him because he gave me the first shot. Right. But remember what I was doing in the beginning. I would follow random dump trucks wherever they were going. So every place that they were going would be different. Right. Right. So I, I it led me to different opportunities, different jobs. So I had multiple opportunities. So what I did wh- when I when, once I started growing my dump trucks. I will put one here, one there, one here, one there, so I can grow all the all those businesses at the same time. At the same time, got you right. So, but at the end of the day, my loyalty was to him, right? To his big, to the. So if he needed X amount of loads, I knew that I had to take another truck just to right, just, just to satisfy for the day. him, make just sure to, he's good, yeah, just to show, make sure he was good. Yeah. But everybody, all the other trucks were was out there growing my other businesses. Mm. So when year two, three, and four came. Like, these clients saw me grow. I grew with them. I grew with them, but I had more trucks, so I could do more for them. Got you. Remember, right? This guy, did my first contract, it's a contract, so it ends. Right. So sometimes... How long was it? It was uh, three months. Three months, okay. You know, so... Is that typical in, in dump truck game? Like no, these are three... no we, we have, we, we've, done been, we've done contracts eight months, a year. Okay. Right? But this contract was three, three months. Three months, okay. Right? So when, once those three months are over... Like I'll take my truck, my trucks from there, and go help the other guy, help the other trucks that I had, you know, right. help the other businesses that I had. Right, right, right. That's that that that's really interesting. All right, so okay, so now you you you're growing. You, you have multiple contracts. Um, how do you choose what work to take, and what do you ever turn anything down? Like what what's good work for you, and what's bad work for you? Yeah, they, I, you 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 got to turn some tr- some work down. Be, the pay, it all comes down to the pay. Is it is it beneficial for you? Like there's tolls, there's tolls involved, there's these also. You gotta weigh the options. If the price is good, then you do the do you do the job or you can even negotiate. Yeah. Is it like an industry standard, like I guess by region? Like how does it work in terms of rates? Is is there something like you know if you're working a certain job, you should get paid this amount? Or is it that you just get what you negotiate? You no, so like with these plants, they have their rates. The plants are where all the material comes from, they have their own rates, their own rates. So it's that standard, right? Okay. If you're doing a private job, you can negotiate the rate. You can negotiate the rate that way. Like per hour, trucks are getting within eighty-five to ninety-five dollars an hour. Okay. In New Jersey, that's standard. That's so standard. we we know. So if you're if they offer you a job for ninety-five to eighty-five dollars an hour, you, you know you, it's right on par. It's right on par, right? right? If they're trying to low you low ball you be, below that, that then you you gotta you you can't do that job. Gotcha. What would be an example of a pri- like a private job like? Construction or uh, something yeah, like that. Yeah, construction. Let's say they're knocking down this building that we're in right now, right? And it's in a private, it's a private contractor. You'll do business directly with him. Okay, okay, got you. So you you continue to scale your business. So you said you're at how many trucks now? So when, when we when we last left off, you were you we were had at like four, four five. I had four trucks. Yeah. Okay. So trucks. how does it continue? To year, grow? Year, year two, I just continue knocking on doors, building relationships. The the people that I was doing business with expected more. Expected more from me, right. so I had to buy more. Right. So in year two, I bought six trucks. You bought six trucks in that one year. In one year, I bought at one time or no? Like <laughs> within the year, I bought yeah. six trucks. Got you, got you. Six trucks. So, yeah. but but wait, this is a, uh, let me let's go, go, ahead, go back. Go ahead, let's go ahead. back. I'm, I'm, take me there. Remember, I, I still was working at. I, I was still a district manager. Hold up, you still working your job? I was still working at my job while I grew to truck number four. Okay, all right. So at truck number four, I told my job, I gave my two weeks. Okay. But just f- so people to take this in, I was doing two jobs. I was doing my job as a district manager, and I was doing, I was running my company. Right. You know, nothing was easy. Nothing was given to me. I put in the work. Right. You know, and and anybody could do what I did, just put in the work. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And so I was not the smartest cup of tea. I was not the smartest student. But everything that I that I did, I did it to the max. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I went to college. I played basketball, and ex- people expected me to like after basketball not even get a degree. Yeah. Right. I was smart enough to say to myself like, No, you're gonna get a degree. You're gonna 
take the proper classes to get the degree to move forward. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Got my degree. So and there was a lot of doubters. Yeah. I just didn't I didn't let nobody take what I my goal was to to be something in life. No doubt. So after after uh four, you quit your job, but not only do you quit your job, you went all in. Yeah. Like you you went you went and you uh you got six trucks at one time. Yeah, within that second year, I, I got six trucks. Dope, dope. So, so what type of pressure did that put on you? Like, cause you're taking your business to a whole nother level. Not only do you have ten trucks now, but you have a bunch more bills, right? So that's yeah. a lot of pressure. So tell me about the emotions that came with that. Talk about that. I think like there was not really emotions in my part. I I, I just I at that point at truck number four, I knew already where I was going. I knew that the people that I was doing business business with were good people. I built the core. I was responsible. And these plants are just going to continue to grow. You know, they're going to continue to get busy. Right. And they trusted me because I'm the type of, I'm hands on. I'm, I'm, you call me at three in the morning, I'm picking up the phone. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm there. Like, I, I'm, re, I'm a responsible person. So I just grew, I just grew with the contracts. I grew with the jobs. I grew with the people that, that are in these construction sites. The, the people that I did business with, I grew with them. So I knew that I had enough work to to continue to buy trucks. So I, I left my job and I've dedicated my full time to be a, an entrepreneur, to be a boss. Got you, got you, got you, dope. And then you started you so you so you had your own ten, and then you started adding on other people's trucks, right? Yeah. One talk about that. Yeah. Once once uh once I grew to ten, there was a lot of people like you know through social media. They a lot of people knew that I knew. They wanted trucks. They wanted. Them to, they wanted to know, like, yo, how how are you doing it? You know, there was a lot of people that were driving for other people that wanted to buy dumb trucks. Right. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of people now in the in, t- in today's day don't have trucks because they don't have the right information. They don't have somebody to lead them to get a truck. Right. So I I, I already went through the process. I was already two years in. I already knew how to get a truck. I already knew what it took to get a truck. So a lot of people would just come to me randomly, yo, I want a truck. Can you help me out? How do you get it? So I'll, I'll, I'll lead them to Kenworth. I'll tell them, yo, talk to Doug. Right. Right? I'll, I'll do the steps. And I already had a lot of work. So once, once, they, once they finally got their truck, it was easier for me. They, I was their cheat code. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a cheat code. I had to knock on doors. I had to, like, do all the... All the like every day, wake up, follow trucks for you two pound, hours. Pounding yeah. the pavement. Yeah, I was I was doing all the, I, I did the all all the hard work. Right, right. So when when people that I helped got trucks, I was their cheat code because right away they'll have work. Got you, got you. So you brought them in. Are are they working under you, or are they you just giving them the work? How how does your relationship I'm, work with them? With them is I'm just giving them the work. Okay, you know I'm giving them the work. There's no strings attached. Hey, if they want to get another job, to, if they want to work with somebody else tomorrow, they'll do it. There's no string attached. At the end of the day, my goal was to help. Mm. To help, right? That we done business together and then we, we grew from there. Obviously, it's, it's all a business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you can't do business off emotions. Got you. Got you. Know you know what I'm saying? This is, this is a business. You, I'll give you some of my work. You grow with it. When, when, when you get somebody else's work, you do their work. Yeah. Mean, there's no strings attached. It's not... Nothing that I'm holding you back. I want to see you grow. No doubt, no doubt. I, I love that. What What are some of the downsides of the dump truck business? In In what terms? In, in, in terms of making money. When When do you struggle? When 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 are the what, What's the se- like the seasonality of it? Like, okay. talk about that. Um, the downsides of the business is slow seasons like December, December, January. But it all depends. Now, if we have like this year, we had a crazy winter. It snowed a lot, so we were we were doing snow removals, we were doing um, delivering salt for the, for all the DOTs around the state of New Jersey. Right. So there was a lot there was a lot of work. So this this was a busy winter. Last year we 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 it was a slow year due to that pandemic. Right. You know what I'm saying. So a lot of people that got in last year in business, a lot a lot of them failed, right? Because construction went down like over fifty percent. So we, we survived because I had great relationships, right? The people that I helped survive, some of them didn't survive, but some of them, like most of them, 90% survived because of all the relationships that I had. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so they, that, that, those relationships kept us afloat with work-wise. So you said, so you said the, the December, so the snow kind of impacts it. I guess rain impacts yeah, it. Yeah, rain impacts it, snow, but 
In, rain is like the most that impacts it. Okay. Like snow, it doesn't impact it because then we do snow removal. Right. We deliver salt. So snow is good. Snow is good. Snow is good. It, is the pay like on par with what you do with anything else? Like is the snow the same as like dirt? No. Like when you're doing like, um, when you're delivering salt, it, pay, it pays less, but it's still, it's still, it, it, it'll, it'll still pay enough it's, for your truck. It's still to, enough to, yeah, to let, your, tricks op, let yeah, your trucks yeah. operate. But then we also do snow plowing. Okay. We do snow plan. We, that pays, it, it depends the route, from 120 an hour to 140 an hour. Now, with the snow plowing, are you doing, like, commercial buildings? No, we're doing, doing it streets? for the We're doing it for the state. How, mm-hmm. do you, how do you get involved with that? Is that something you have to, you like, bid come on, to you? No, you, you got to bid. It's like a bidding process with the state. Okay. So, you do the bidding process with the state, and then you, um, you get these jobs. Is, they'll, is it, they'll, they'll provide all the equipment. They'll provide all the equipment, and then you... Um, the they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll call you like, hey, it's going to snow. You need to be there at a certain time. Mm, got, so is that something you have to do like beforehand? Like you have to have that set up or can you get set up like in within like a couple weeks? So no, that, that that's beforehand. That's like that's a whole whole process. OK. Yeah. And what are they looking for in order to get you set up like for Just your company? The right bit, the right. No, dollar oh, the amount. right number. Yeah, dollar amount. Like I, with, with the snow plow, I go through one of my friends really does the plowing, really does the contract. Yeah. He I just. He subs it out to me. Got you, got you, got you. So you've created like a, a whole network to where yeah, 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 you can yeah, yeah. always find some. I type always of work. got work. Always have work. No doubt, no doubt. What do you What do you enjoy the most about the business? Because you you don't drive, so you're just you're, you're an operator. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like what 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 do you enjoy most about about operating the, your, your company? The the most what I enjoy the most is man all the relationships that I built. You know what I'm saying? And, and I know I built it from the ground up. Like nobody, I did this. With hard work, so when I when now I can like sometimes like there's days that you could take it chill, you know, you could take it easy, and you just see you just see your your company afloat working every day, but without all the hard work and the work ethic, it's not gonna get done. Yeah, if somebody want is watching this right now and they wanted to start a dump truck company, where would you tell them to start? Would you tell them to do what you did? Would you tell them to buy a truck and then go follow? Like what what, what would your advice to them be in hindsight? In hindsight, I'll, right now, I'll recommend whoever buys a dump truck to drive their own truck. Okay. Drive their own truck. Right. Reason why is I, I've tried both, right? I've tried people like just doing a dump truck and buy, not driving it and doing what I did, but not everybody got my work ethic. So for me, the recommendation is drive your own truck, see if you like the business, and then go from there and mm. buy another truck. Got you. What would you tell them? How would you tell them to find work? Find work. Um, do what I did. Do what you did. Do what I did, man. Follow, go knock on these construction sites. Saturdays, this construction sites working Sundays. Yo, knock on doors and take after, after you park your truck, go work. Go find some construction sites and go knock on those doors and go talk who, to. These who people. do you want to look for? Who do you want to talk? Project to? managers. That's the gatekeeper. That's the gatekeepers right there. Ask for the project managers. Ask for the project managers at every construction site. And, and and how long will it usually take, like, if everything goes well, for them to put you on a job? If if they're like, yeah, we need we need we need you, we need some trucks. They, what do you got? Like, what questions do they ask yeah, you? Yeah, how many trucks that you have? Okay, you know, these these big construction sites are looking for numbers. You know, they don't want to deal with, they don't want to deal with one person. They don't want to deal with. 20 owners okay you know what i'm saying okay sometimes they want to deal with one guy that has 30 trucks so it was just it's a smoother transition for them it's smooth is a smoother it's easier for them to pay you they don't got to pay 30 different guys right but some of them will, some people will give you the opportunity got you what what could make you lose a, a, a dump truck contract just uh not showing up to work like delivering material dumping the material at the wrong place at the job at the job site mm. just doing like not, not being on time, yeah. things like that will get you kicked out of contract. How, how cutthroat is this business? How cutthroat? Well, really, real cutthroat. When when you say very, what, what why? Because everybody's lowballing the, the the jobs to get the jobs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. But in my case, that doesn't really affect me because the relationships that I have with these people, you know, so the people that I do business with is are direct. I don't do business through brokers, right? I do business direct with the companies. Right. So they've been working with me five years straight. And in those within those five years, I never let them down. Got you. So you trying to cut through me is not, it's not, <laughs> it's not really going to affect me because these people are loyal. 
Gotcha. And I've been loyal to them. So it's, for, for me, it's not really... It doesn't affect you. It doesn't really affect me. Are there a lot of brokers out there? Is that, is that a place for people to go to look for new business, like find brokers? Yeah, they, yeah, brokers. You, can, they, you they, can do that also? Yeah, there's people that give out work. Yeah. There's people that give work out, you know? Like, for me, I don't like calling myself a broker. That's not what I'm at. A broker, you got to sign contracts and like, hey, you're, you're stuck with me for a year. Like, for me, I, I have enough work yeah. to, to, to provide. But at the same time, I have my own trucks that could do the work. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. if you need the work, I'll help you get the work. I'll help you with, um, put your truck work, make your truck work. And then from there, you can move on. So, like, and like you said, so like the people who work with you is no strings attached. You don't do any paperwork with them nah, or nothing like no that. No strings attached. You just like, hey, man, here's, 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 the ocean, you, here's the ocean, come drink. Yeah, give you opportunity. Yeah. But I, I, at the end of the day, I know that my clients are first. Has anyone ever let you down? Given, yeah. would, would you give them opportunity? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You just got to cut them off. <laughs> you cut them off just like that. Because, yo, you, remember, I got a family I got to feed. You know what I'm saying? My family depends on this. I have three kids. Yeah. So, and the people that I've, do, that I've done business with, I can't let them down. Right. Because that's my bread and butter. Right. You know, so I can't let um, Tom come over here and mess up my business. Right. So I, you got to part ways. Got you. What, look, looking into the future, how do you scale a dump truck company? You, you already have 10 trucks. You have a bunch of people that you work with, a network. How? Because you said when you came into this, you had a vision. You wanted to build a big business. Mm. What's a big business to you in, 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 in the dump truck world? In the dump truck world, I just, for now, it's like, I, have, I already have 10. I already sub out 25 to 30 people. Just grow from there. Just keep going. Mm. You know, just keep growing from there. Maybe buy an excavator. Maybe do my own construction projects at, at one point in life but from now i'm good where i'm at i i, I like what i'm doing i'm just going to continue to grow the construction my, my 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 fleet and go from there man what well, you said by an excavator that's the thing that uh that yeah. actually digs the dirt right yeah it digs the dirt so, maybe maybe do my own construction maybe do my own excavations yeah something like that around those lines i, I I'm, I'm still new in business so like for me, I'm, I'm I'm I have five years, right? But I consider I still consider myself new in business. Why? Because there's people been doing it for twenty years, but there's there's something I can tell you that there's people doing it for twenty years that haven't accomplished what I've done in five. Mm. Mm. And that all comes down to work ethic. Wow, wow. Now nah, that's interesting. So so do you see like what the with the companies around you? Like how how do you stand out? Is it just your work ethic? I think what yeah my work ethic yeah. and, and we do the job and we do it the right way you know we don't have people complaining oh hi well, your guy didn't show up today to work right your, your guy your guy dumped the material at the wrong location right you know everything like my drivers like my ten drivers like I I start like these con when I do these contracts I start with my with my trucks I start doing it with my trucks yeah because I know I have the reliable drivers right I my drivers I have five years in business like. Eight of them been with me three years. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So they're they're responsible individuals, and I can trust them. Yeah. So I'm not gonna take upon a, a, a construction and send one of my subs. Yeah. Gotcha. I got. I'm the face of the company. I gotta send my guys first. We will 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 do the jobs, and then I'll bring in the guys slowly. Got you. Are there any um like if 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 you make a mistake or anything, any like cost that's associated with like make it like failures or anything with, with dump trucks you yeah, talk yeah. about that like for example one of my i sent one of the one of my subs last year to do it to do a job right in asphalt we do asphalt um, milligan paving on the, the state okay for the state of new jersey right in the turnpike the guy got lost with the asphalt the asphalt has to be maintained hot right so he got lost to get back to the job site so he got lost and i was billed five thousand dollars mm. <laughs> damn so I lost five thousand dollars just because the guy. By the time he got to the job, the asphalt was cold, yeah. and they couldn't use it. And this was this was even your truck. This was no, nah, it was else. somebody I gave work to. So why they bill you? So they it was still going through you. Yeah, it's my it was my job. Got you. It's got my you. job. So that's that's the risk that you run when you sub out some work. You're, you're still responsible. Yeah. Remember, this is your relationship. These are your customers. Do you have insurance for stuff like that? Yeah, but. That's something that you just pay because you just pay. You're not gonna go through insurance because that's gonna hire your gonna insurance. Hire insurance. You that's something you, you, you take the loss, and that's and and that happened to me. Just I helped the guy out for the day, <laughs> so it's not like I, it's not like I even had a like weeks of him working with me right. that I could take the money from him. It was just right. he needed work for that day, and I and I helped him out. So you have to be very particular about the yeah. You got to yeah the people that you give work to. You got to be particular. Make sure that they're on board. So that's that was a life lesson for me. I learned from that.
Yeah. And we kept it moving. What did you start doing differently after that? When you when hey, people it, you brought on? I don't I don't really give people work that I don't that they don't work with me on a daily basis. Gotcha. That I can trust that that been that been with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I do different. I can't now if you need a job for just for a day, I really don't entertain you. you know? Gotcha. Just, gotcha. If you want to work with me long term, then we work long term. And I'm not holding you back, man. And whenever you tell me, hey, I got a better job, go ahead. No problem. <laughs> no doubt. How, how important is, is branding, uh, branding your business to you? Like- it's, it's, it's really important because, you know, there's so many dump trucks, but what are you doing? What is your truck doing different? Right. You know what I'm saying? So by me branding and my, me sitting here with you, people are going to know my story. People are going to reach out. And, yo, I have, a, like, my story's not, it's not the regular. Nobody gave me this dump truck business. Right. I went, I, I went to get it. I got it. You right. know, like my dad was not in the dump truck world. My, my mom wasn't, I built it from the scratch up, from the scratch up. And now my kids are going to be like, no doubt. They're going to have a, like daddy left you a dump truck company. Do, do you take them around the site? Do you teach yeah, them about yeah. the business? No, well, they're, they're still, they're still young. My, oh, okay. I got a, a newborn. She okay. was born a week ago. Okay. 10 days ago. Congratulations, Thanks, man. That's thing. dope. My daughter's, three and my son is one so they, they they love the trucks but they don't really understand it yet yeah yeah got you got you so you you have one dump truck that really caught my eye man you have the kobe bryant dump truck talk about that what inspired you to do a, a kobe bryant dump truck so when kobe was alive when i bought my fifth truck i bought a truck and it was and i, and I named it kobe so i was like yo just just purchase my fifth truck aka five rings aka kobe bryant ah. right so i'm always i was always a kobe fan um, one of my favorite players of all time. So when he passed, I was like, man, I feel that I have to do this for this guy, man. Because not only was he good in the in the basketball court, one of the be- best players in the world, he also taught people never give up. You know what I'm saying? Always put in the work. Always lead by example. So I like my whole my whole swag is about that. You know? So it's like, yo, I had to do that tribute to him. Like I owed him that. Yeah. From the heart, I owed him that. So I did that for him. No doubt, mamba mentality. Mamba mentality, you know, <laughs> and so, so I did it for him, and I, a lot of people loved it, man. A lot of people yeah, did. nah, it's dope. I, I'm sure you got a great response and a big reception from 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 that. From yeah, that big respect. A lot of <laughs> man, a lot of people hit me up about it, and you guys, whoever follows me after this, you know, go check it out. It's a dope, dope truck. Yeah, do you, do you how do is that like like who drives that truck? Um, well, my friend used to drive that truck, <laughs> yeah. but now he got his own truck. Okay. So one of my best drivers drive. You, okay. Because I was going to yeah. say, like, you got to make sure that one yeah, stays it's, it's pristine stays clean, and clean. clean, clean. You know yeah, yeah. But it's a dump. At the end of the it's day, still it's a dump, dump truck. truck. So It's still doing yo, the same job as everything else. It's still doing the same job. Just every, it, there's people, like, tag me on Instagram. Like, they'll, they'll take pictures of it. Right. Send them to me. Like. Right, right, right. right so right. It, it gets a good reception when, when, it, when it's in the road. Yeah, nah, nah, that's that, that's dope, man. So listen, man, it's it's been dope. You know, what I'm saying thank you so much for all the all the value you've added in terms of the dump truck game. There's so much people wanting to get into dump trucks. Um, I think because it's it seems like the work is pretty steady. Yeah. Like you know, with 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 like over the road semi trucks, it's like you got to kind of find work. But like with the dump trucks, it's like you stay local and you could just like find, it's not that hard to find work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not hard to find it's not hard to find work, man. If you if you do the things that I, I I said in this video, it's not it's not hard, man. Just try to build relationship. Be persistent. Persistence is key. Yeah. Like if they tell you no once, hey man, this guy told me no. Let me call him in. Let me call him in a month. You know, because that's what people want to see. Like some people won't give you the opportunity the first day, but if you keep asking, then they're, they're gonna say, hey, this kid really wants it. No doubt. This kid really wants. It. He wants to put in the work. He, let, let's give him the opportunity. Once they give you the opportunity. Don't fuck it up, you know? <laughs> Don't mess it up. Sorry for my language. Nah, nah, nah. 100%. You're right, man. Don't mess it You're up. Right. You're right. And um, another thing that I want to say, like, business, when you when you do business, always define the word business. Don't 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 get into business because, hey, this guy's making money. I, I could do the same thing, you know? The word business comes with a lot of sacrifice, a lot of determination, a lot of persistence. And if you don't have that, the the word business is not for you. You got to be an employee. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. I was I was once an employee myself. You know, some people are are, are okay being employees, but to be a an entrepreneur, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. 
No doubt, no doubt. And I usually ask for a final thought, but I think that was kind of like a final thought right there. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, listen, Hyro, man, where can people connect with you? Where can they learn more about your trucking company um, and learn more about you personally? Give out your social media, so forth and so on. You could uh, hit me up on Instagram, JG Cruz Trucking. Dot, JG Cruz Trucking. <laughs> That's what dot com. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> nah, right. JG Cruz Trucking. Yep. So is the letter J, the letter G. Um, cruise, C-R-U-Z, and then the word trucking. Okay, cool, man. Well, listen, bro, I appreciate you. Thank you for all the value you've added. Man. Thank you for having so, me, man. So, so dope. Hustle fam, another dope show. Listen, uh, you know what I always say around this time? If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Me and Hyro, we out. We out, man. <laughs>